Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Today, I have something fun for you. So I get a lot of questions that sound like, how do I do this or that? How do I paint this kind of a scene? How do I paint that kind of a scene? And it's a topic I talked about a lot before. Now, here's the kind of angle I want to give you, the extra perspective for this video. Instead of asking how to paint a specific scene, ask yourself two questions. One is what do I see in the scene that I like? And two, what would I want to convey to the viewer? So from looking at the scene and thinking to yourself, how should I paint it? And, th and phrasing the question in a way that basically uh, implies that there's one way or maybe a few very n limited ways of doing it, you expand it to whatever you see in the scene that makes it special for you or, or makes you want to paint it or what you would like the viewer to see in that scene. Usually it's the same thing if you think about it. So my take on it is I want to show you work by this uh, artist here, Eric Elliott. Um, Let's open up a new tab just to show you uh, his Instagram account. And I actually saw his Instagram account after someone shared it in a local Facebook group. Uh, one post um, she shared really, um, really, I guess, resonated with me. And it's this one. Okay, and you saw it uh, in the previous page. Um, up to four versions of this still life now with a fifth in progress. I keep meaning to post something, but instead of finishing anything, I just start another one. So I have something like 10 in progress paintings. It feels good to finish, to finally finish one. Now look at these and we, we have a better view of them here. Look at that. The same scene rendered in a different way. Very different approaches. Some of them are pretty close to one another, but others are very far off. So for example, the um, the top left and bottom right, kind of similar. They have a lot of interesting tangents to them, uh, but the shape design is completely different. Top left is a little more squarish and straight lines based. Bottom right is a little rounder, right? Now, if you look at the top right and bottom left, on the other hand, the top right is very misty and kind of blended on purpose. And the bottom left one is what I would consider probably the most loyal to the reference or the most direct. Now, let's see what else is there. Yeah, so it's zoomed in, it's zoomed in view um, of all of these. And this just goes to show you that there isn't one correct way to paint any given subject. The, the better way to look at it is how do I want to convey what I'm looking at? And that helps you carve your own path. And that helps you create the thing you want to create and the thing you want to express for the viewer. It's very, very important because that question of how to do something is very narrow and it implies there's just one way of doing that. And I really cannot stress enough how untrue that is. Okay. Now the next question is, well, okay, how do I get to the point where I can paint what, what I want to convey to the viewer? So I wrote down three quick steps. We'll go over them, but obviously this deserves like a whole different video and, and for every topic. But basically I wrote down number one fundamentals. The first thing you want to pay attention to is learning the fundamentals of painting and of the medium you're working in, which which means how do you use it technique wise? How do you use that medium? Uh, how do you mix the paint? How do you apply it to paper? And then there's the overarching fundamentals. What looks good compositionally? Now that's something that's very hard to learn and very hard to teach, trust me. Um, but it, a lot of it comes down to uh, a few very basic rules and then just trying it out more and more. But you can decide that you keep the compositions of the things you paint. Like in this example, I don't know if the crop stayed the same or not. It may have not changed, right? Uh, but you can decide to limit that kind of aspect. In my experience, the most important thing is the values if you want to get that realistic feel. So learn how to mix the right value properly, how to get the right darkness, learn how to match the color. You see very important skills that I'm working on and there's always, always room for improvement. Um, so you work on those fundamentals. That's the very first step. Now, the second step I wrote is practice. And this is where you, and, and they don't happen like one, two, three, they all happen at the same time. Uh, so once you feel comfortable with the fundamentals, you can start doing some different things such as um, doing a lot of studies, looking at a scene, painting it, looking at another scene, painting that too, looking at other people's work, recreating them. That's not cheating, that's not uh, copying, that's studying, okay? Um, all of these things, you do repetition and then you feel like you're weak in one aspect, you go back to it and, and study it. For me now, it's definitely color mixing. So I feel I'm weak at it. I'll go back and, and work on just that fundamental, feel confident enough, go back to practicing. And th th this is probably the longest step, 
But I do want to say a few words about these two steps because sometimes people just jump too fast to practicing and they don't see improvement and they feel bad about it. And they do practice a lot and they try many times and they fail because their their starting point isn't close enough to where it needs to be. So maybe it is time to take a few steps back and go back to the fundamentals. Spend some time on them. Some time could be a month, could be two months. That sounds reasonable to me. And then after that, go back to practice and trying to do studies of other people, right? So that's the second step. Now, the third step is innovate. And that's where, as in this example that we're looking at, uh, the artist is innovating upon the reference photo, trying to interpret it in many different ways. And let me clarify, in the practice stage, you most of the time will strive to recreate what you see as accurately as you can. That doesn't mean you cannot add your own artistic flair to it, or you shouldn't. Of course you can. But if we're going to study, let's study, pro let's practice properly. Okay, so you, you want to make a proper s study and then learn how to change reality to your advantage. Because how will you exaggerate if you don't know how to create the very basic unexaggerated thing, right? Um, so, yeah, and then the last one is innovate. And that's where you start trying out different interpretations, different techniques, even different mediums could be. Uh, and I do think that's how you approach it. So let's conclude real fast. The first point of this video is don't ask how do I paint this kind of a scene or how do I paint this particular scene. The better question is what do I see in this scene that interests me and what do I want to convey to the viewer. The thing you see, the thing that attracts you to the scene will be the thing that's responsible for making it your own and unique and special. To me, what I'm most interest, interested in is the light. So the so I at least hope and try that the light and shadow in my paintings will have that dramatic effect, um, this feeling of place, the, the feeling of the atmosphere I want to convey. And maybe I fall short on other aspects, right? And that I'm working on improving. But that's the main thing I notice. And that's the main thing I want to convey to the viewer. So ask yourself, what am I seeing? What do I want to convey to the viewer? Now, how do you get to that point? Work on the fundamentals, the very basics, mixing um, water to paint ratio and water color, getting the shapes accurately, all of that good stuff. Then you start practicing more and more and more and more and more and more. You feel weak at something, you go back to the fundamentals, you work on that, then you continue practicing more and more and more and more until you feel confident. And then at some point, you will feel so confident that you'll just want to innovate. And you'll very naturally innovate. So this is the general way I look at this growth process. And philosophically, how I look at that question of how do I paint X kind of a subject or Y kind of a uh, picture, Take it as you will, that's just my recommendation, just one way of doing things. There's an endless amount of ways of reaching the same goal. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. Again, from my personal experience, you may find a different process works better for you, different ratios work better for you. Find what works for you and go for that. And of course, always make sure you're enjoying yourself because that's why we all paint. Uh, so thank you so, so much for joining me in this video. I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, leaving a comment, subscribing if you, subscribing if you still aren't. And I would greatly appreciate it. And we'll see you again in the next video.